on some real real shit i woke up today and i'm i was kind of anxious just a little bit not like where you're where my heart's like pounding or anything but there's like that nervousness that like excitement because i recently started a new job i'm a runner busser at a restaurant and so you know you got to pick up them those big trays <laughs> and then you know you could have up to like 10 plates on this big tray and then on the other shoulder you have to have like the kickstand to then put the tray down on and on top of that you have to kick the door open for you to get out of the kitchen you have to scream the word door so that somebody knows so everybody knows that you're leaving and and then um i'm going to work later today for my second shift and so I woke up and I was kind of like nervous but excited at the same time because I know physically it's a demand and I know that it's it's pushing me to learn different positions for my body and it's putting me under stress. And as much as it makes me uncomfortable, I also love it at the same time because I know that that stressful situation, it's kind of pushing me. It's pushing me to to have to to have to adapt and to have to stay calm and to have to mature right it's like yeah but anyways so then the reason i bring all that up is because when i feel kind of nervous or when i feel this like excitement i want to put that energy into something and right now it's only like what time is it it's the uh it's 12 14 and i don't have work till 4 p.m so i needed to put that energy into something and so I figured, why not put it into like a cool podcast where I'm outside in the backyard and I'm shirtless, which makes me kind of uncomfortable, too. And, you know, let's change it up. We're going to be sitting down. And like I could I could go inside and like put on a shirt and everything. But this is what I was doing when I decided that I would record the podcast back here. So why should I change myself for you guys <laughs> my mom tells me my hair looks big and that i should wet it and make it look more you know more like less out of control and i've gotten criticism for my hair from other family members but it's like i'm gonna be me you know i'm not gonna change myself something so you know my hair it's like it's not it has nothing to do with me as a person my spirit so i'm not going to change my hair even if my mom doesn't like it or if a lot of people don't like it because i am doing this with a purpose and i want to do it and i i like my hair so it doesn't matter what anybody else says and i'm out here in the backyard shout out to my mom this is my mom's backyard and I'm not going to put on clothes for you guys either because, like I said, this is the shit. I was, I was just like this, working out and doing some, like, a bunch of exercises. Like, I have a balance board way back there somewhere, and I have, like, a, I have like a bar, and I was doing some, some things, and I was doing some single leg, some single leg raises, and I'm not going to change myself for anybody. And I want to put an emphasis for that because I really, really mean it. Like, I feel good right here just being in my fucking underwear and being right here with the trees around me, with my music blasting in the background. Like, I feel fucking amazing right now. I, I could have went upstairs to my room and been like, you know what? Like, I'm going to do the podcast in the room. I'm going to close all the curtains so I get optimal audio quality. I'm going to put on, like, proper attire. I'm going to wet my hair and make it look nice for you guys. But I'm like, nah. Like, the art of human is about self-free expression. It's about being yourself. It's about loving yourself. It's about battling your fears, battling your insecurities. It's about being open-minded, not judging yourself or one another. And the only way that I'm really going to better myself at that is if I practice it and I be my best every single day. And me sitting here without a shirt talking to you guys and, you know, recording this podcast out here, you know, for me, that's that's me living that life. And I know that every time I do some shit like this where it makes me uncomfortable, but I follow through with it, I know it's only going to make me into a, like, stronger person. 
And to be honest, I didn't expect what I'm saying right now to even be the podcast. But you know what? We're already like a few minutes in. We're like, we're five minutes in. Like, this is the motherfucking podcast. Like, I was literally just going to make this like the intro or some shit. But I feel like we're kind of rolling on it. So, fuck it. Yeah, guys. It's like, man, I'm telling you guys some personal shit, you know, like my work and you guys are seeing me here pretty vulnerable. But there's a level of beauty in that because I see when I see other artists or other people just being themselves, being goofballs or being really quiet and being very sophisticated with their word choice or maybe just being super like, you know, some people's word word vocabulary bank is just super simple and then i love that too because it's just like you know there's a beauty in everything you know you could you could hear someone saying fool and bitch and all these bad words and think oh that's a super uneducated motherfucker and like they sure didn't go to school but at the same time it's like yo that's cool like like they're expressing themselves they're not caring like especially you know people everybody Depending on the city that you come from, depending on the state that you come from, depending on the country that you come from, there's different languages, there's different slang, there's different, you know, people speak at different cadences. Like, I think there's a lot of beauty in the differences. And I think in having a universal eye or having a non judgmental perspective upon life and other people, like, you get to see so much beauty. And actually, that's a good point that I just made because one of the things I was thinking about earlier when I woke up, because I kind of thought I would do the podcast today just by myself. I was thinking about, uh, I read this book recently, my friend or my cousin-in-law, Liza Falcon, which actually she was on the podcast not too long ago, maybe like three episodes ago. And she gave me a book when she came over. When she came over, she gave me a book. It's called The Four Agreements. It's called The Four Agreements. And basically, well, the book's written by Don Miguel Ruiz. So if you want to go check it out, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. This guy, his, like, grandpa was a part of the Toltec tribe. It's like a tribe down in Mexico. And apparently this dude, Don Miguel, he wasn't going to go too deep into this Toltec tribe. Like, there's a whole way of living by the Toltec people. And he decided, no, I want to be a doctor. I'm not really going to go into that spiritual lifestyle like that's not what he wanted that's not what he wanted to do but then one day on the way back from like school or some exam or something like he ended up getting into a big car accident where he almost died and for whatever reason after that car accident he had the revelation of like you know what Uh, maybe i'll go learn that spiritual stuff by my ancestors you know and so that's kind of where these things that i'm about to tell you guys about that's kind of where it derives from is is from this guy called don miguel ruiz and he derived it from this this like tribe called the Toltec, right? And you can look it up. And you can look up the book. And the book talks about four agreements. The first one being the first one being <laughs> Oh, be impeccable with your word. So being impeccable with your word pretty much means use your word wisely. Like be impeccable with your words. So apparently impeccable, im means like not to, im, you know, like imperative, im, im just means like not to. And then apparently peccable means sin, something to that extent. Don't quote me on this. But so impeccable is like not to sin. And you could have a whole religious connotation to not sinning. But really what it comes down to is using your words not to judge other people and not to judge yourself. Because according to the author in the book, he said that our word, what we say is the most powerful thing that we have. When you have people like Hitler in his, in our history books, what was it that convinced the people to listen to Hitler? And what was it about Hitler that convinced everybody that that there was one particular race that was like the supreme race? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to contemplate that, like. Man, somebody, one human being had the power to influence that many people? Like, how? You know, he's just one human being. Like, I am one human being, but I haven't influenced the whole fucking country to to follow every little word I make. But it's about fear. It's about 
It's about creating ideas, right? And people start to believe in these ideas. Especially if people are ignorant and they don't know. And you could also use your word to gossip about people. And in the book it says how gossiping is like a virus. And gossiping amongst one another is like this virus that we're just continuously spreading. And how, how a lot of times we gossip. But it's really more so just you're building a narrative based on what you want to hear. You know, you're, and a lot of times we make assumptions about what it is that's going on instead of actually asking the person and figuring out what they're actually feeling and thinking at, at the moment. So that's the first one. Be impeccable with your word. Don't judge other people. Don't judge yourself and use your word for something beautiful. You know, don't just. And this is just, you know, take it with a grain of salt, because obviously I read the book and then I forget about the book and I, I go ahead and live my life. And I'm sure occasionally I gossip and I'm not 100 percent. I'm not an angel. Right. But it's a good it's a good um, it's a good basis to, to live your lifestyle. You know, be impeccable with your word. Don't judge others. Don't judge yourself. You know, use your word for power because your words are very, very powerful. Even if you don't think so, they're very powerful because whatever you speak it re re it re inst like it instills whatever the hell you're saying it, it it becomes more real inside your own mind so it's like yes your words are very powerful in fact and if they don't influence other people they influence yourself for sure so it is very powerful especially if you hope to live a happy life and i think you deserve to live a happy life so then the second one the second agreement is don't make assumptions. You know, don't make assumptions just like I was saying earlier. Like, you could make the assumption. You could make the assumption that, oh, like, you know, the book talks about how, like, I can go to the mall, right? I can go to the mall. I'm walking. And then all of a sudden, I see this girl. And we kind of cross eyes. And then we smile at each other. And then she waves. And then she keeps going. I keep going. You can make the assumption and start visualizing this girl the super huge dream of like man that girl's in love with me and one day we're gonna meet again and she's gonna be the one and like we're gonna get married and have beautiful babies that's making the assumption that that smile that's what it intended but maybe this girl was just i don't know maybe like you reminded her of her cousin and you look like a nice guy so then she just smiled or maybe she's even married and then she's just like in a really good place and she just saw you. You looked happy and she looked she's in a good mood. So then she smiled at you like, you know what I'm saying? Like because you can make up these big old hypotheticals and and then start visualizing all these things. But it's like you won't really know until you go ask. So like if you were to actually have that hypothetical, you you cross paths with somebody and you smile. Why not just go up to them right then and there and be like, hey, yo, like. I think you're really pretty and I wanted to get to know you a little bit more. Like, here's my number. Let's text. I'd like to know more about you. Like, that's the way to go. You know, like, after that, it's not imagination anymore. It's like real shit. You, you don't make the assumption that she was in love with you or that she wants your dick or your, you know, your vag. <laughs> but that, you know, maybe, like, you know, maybe she doesn't actually want anything to do with you. She just wanted to smile, you know. And, you know, making assumptions could go many different routes. You can make the assumption that that this person wants to eat this when, in fact, they don't. You can make the assumption that, oh, no, she wouldn't want to come. He or she wouldn't want to come over. Like, I, she, she or he doesn't like this type of music, and this isn't their type of vibe. So, like, nah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to come. No, like, let me ask and see if you want to come. And then all of a sudden, this person might say, hell yeah, low key. I'm like super into that band and I'm going to be right over. And then you have a fucking magical night with this person. Or maybe it's like a family member or some shit. And you have like a fun, a super memorable night that goes down in the history books. Um, man, do you guys want to hear all four agreements? Well, what am I hearing from the crowd? Uh, yes. Eh. Yes, 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 definitely. Okay, we'll keep going and we'll, we'll make it quick. So the next one is, the next one is, so we went through be impeccable with your word. Don't make assumptions. 
Don't take anything personal. Don't take anything personal. So it says not to take anything personal because everything that people tell you, it's really just conveying or projecting what's inside of them. Right now, I've been in a much more... I love myself right now to the highest level I ever have in my whole life. So I'm projecting a lot of love towards people. And because I've decided not to judge people either, I see the beauty in where you're at. I see the beauty in it and I don't judge you. So then I can tell you a lot of beautiful things about you. And in fact, that may be the truth about you. And that may be the thing that you do know at the core to be about yourself. So if I tell you, hey, Ma, like you are beautiful and like, thank you so much. You're so hardworking and like, you're really awesome. I could tell that to my mom and I truly believe that. But unless she truly believes that about herself, it doesn't necessarily matter what I say. But maybe my words can influence my mom to truly believe that. But at the same time, if my mom already believes that about herself, me telling her doesn't really make a difference. It doesn't. If I think I'm a great podcaster, everybody can tell me I'm a great podcaster. But I don't take it personal because I already know I'm a great podcaster. And if I start to let all these other people, all these other voices, wow, you're like super, you're like the best. And I keep hearing this and I'm like, yeah, I am the fucking best. You know, and then it adds to like all this ego. And then your emotions are kind of withheld among all these people that have told you that you're fucking great. But then, you know, that one 10% of people that then tell you, hey, what the fuck? Like, actually, you fucking suck. And then all of a sudden, that negative comment has a big effect on you because you've decided to allow any comments or any beliefs about yourself to be dependent on somebody else aside from your, yourself. So that's what the guy said in the book. It's like, don't take anything personal, including positive comments. Even positive comments about yourself like, don't take it personal in the sense that, like, if you think you are beautiful, if you think you are great, like, somebody else telling you doesn't make you more beautiful and more great. Like, you already think that about yourself. There's no, like, fucking higher, 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 higher level of I think I'm great. Like, if you're great, you're great. If you're happy, you're happy. If you're loving, you're loving. Like, there's no, there's no, like, fucking times two. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like... If I believe myself to be a loving person, I am a loving person. A thousand people can tell my tell me that I'm a loving person. But if I already truly believed it, everybody in the world can tell me that. And it's not actually going to make a difference. It really isn't. Because in the same in the same scenario, there could be half the world, half the world telling me that I'm a piece of shit. And to me, I believe to myself that I'm a loving person and I don't take that personal. So I think really, really the biggest takeaway from living your life and not taking anything personal is that your emotions are not dependent on anybody except yourself now. And that's a that's a huge emancipation, at least from my experience, because now you could remain in a pretty emotionally stable place because once you have really instilled some type of positive affirmation or positive belief about yourself. You've really instilled it into yourself. Like, I believe I am a loving person. Then it doesn't matter how many people tell me that I'm not or how many people continuously tell me that I am. I stay in the same mind state. I stay in the same place. I don't get overly excited and I don't get I don't get down in the gutters because 10 people tell me that I fucking suck. I stay right right about in the middle you know of course of course of course sometimes i'm tired and sometimes i'm more irritable and sometimes i'm in a bad place so as much as i believed myself to be a loving person sometimes other people's comments will have an effect on me right and of course the more you do it and the more self-belief that you have the more independent you'll become and the more stable you'll be but at the end of the day you're a human being right like you're a human being and if you don't get your sleep, you don't get your food, you know, you break your leg, your body's in a in a very traumatic place at the moment, like, you know, things change, you know, things change and your confidence may vary from one day to like, you know, maybe a couple months from now. 
you know and that's okay too completely okay and that kind of takes me to the last part which is uh the last agreement is to be at your best so basically it's taking the first three agreements of not be impeccable with your word don't take anything personal and um don't take anything personal and not making assumptions you kind of take those three uh, three agreements and then the last one is just practicing those three agreements to the best of your ability and just being yourself i want to say you know just being your best self you know loving towards yourself loving towards the people around you and and that's that's pretty much it and like you know it says in the book like being at your best is going to be different from one day to the next you know just as i was explaining you know who knows you might be super drunk you might do some drugs and you know your judgment's going to be different when you're super super you know in an altered state of mind versus when you're just completely sober like you know so you can't always expect to be like maybe better than you were yesterday but you sure as hell can try you know you could always try and so yeah guys that's um that's a book that Liza gave me and it really influenced me in a positive way so thank you Liza for the book thank you to everybody who may be tuning into this podcast thank you so much you guys are humans like me and i've said this numerous times but even if you were some other type of species that's tapping in like you're welcome aboard too cuz i'm going to give you my trust until until there's a reason not to you know but that being said it's more so that i was just going to a deeper meditative state you know i don't know that whole saying that's kind of something i got trusting someone until you don't but that's not even like a negative like you get what i'm saying like if someone does a bunch of shit for you not to trust them anymore it's uh, for me it's almost not even like not trusting them anymore it's more so just not really not really sending energy towards that direction it's not so much that i'm not trusting you for if anything i'm just going to understand you you know you're in a bad place you're in a place where you want to lie but anyways this could go down a million routes and i hope you guys enjoyed this video The sun is coming out right now as you can probably see. And man, it is gorgeous out here. There's some there's a fresh breeze going on. I got the homie Buddha right here. You guys want to see Buddha? I'll bring you Buddha. Ah, the homie Buddha. Maybe I should have just interviewed Buddha cuz cuz that probably would have been fun, right? What do you guys think? You guys think I should talk to Buddha, interview him real quick? Yes, yes. Eh, yes, yes, and definitely yes. Okay, we're interviewing Buddha. Buddha. There's different Buddhas, right? Cuz I know I've seen the one that's kind of on the bigger side and has a rounder head and everything. Would you say you're like the for real for real Buddha or what? Yeah, I'd say I'm the for real Buddha. I'm like the one that like you guys should really be looking up to. That other Buddha, the kind of bigger one, he's just like the one that the western society decided to pick up cuz he just looked kind of funny and people like to rub his stomach and um and 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 a lot of Chinese restaurants make a lot of profit off of having this this kind of bigger version of buddha right there because people like to rub the tummy and they think it's good luck and all that shenanigans but really that's not what that's not what buddha's really about <laughs> you for real you for real i'm for real for real oh my god okay well i have to read i'm going to have to re read 
look at the whole history of Buddha because you just blew my mind away. I thought those Chinese restaurants had it right with that big Buddha. Well, technically that was a, a Buddha, but I'm just saying he's not like the for real, for real, for real, for real Buddha. Like I'm the for real, for real Buddha. Really? Okay, okay. Hi, right, Buddha. What's your final message for the audience? This is the Art of Human podcast, you know, dedicated to discussing the essence of being a happy, healthy human. What's your what's your words of wisdom for the human race? Well, you can look up this quote on Google, but I'll just tell you myself. Let me think. I'm actually kind of blanking out right now. Give me like one second. In the end, only three things matter. How much you loved, how gently you lived, and how gracefully you let go of things not meant for you. That's it. Buddha, you want some next level shit with that wisdom, bro. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Art of Human podcast. I hope you enjoyed the backyard vibes out here. We've had Tori Moi. He's been slapping this whole time. And to be honest, I almost forgot that he was playing, that Tori Moi was playing in the background, TBH. But that means we were in that flow state, bro. We were in that flow state. We were immersed in this motherfucker. And yeah, let's let me show you guys the setup real quick. on top of a motherfucking box we on top of a fucking micro cut shredder box like we making it happen we <laughs> <laughs> the microphone wasn't even here um yeah we making it happen guys we got a fucking micro cut shredder box over here we doing we we, we having fun we having fun there's no limitations out here we having fun i hope you guys enjoyed this podcast peace out